Okay, we're back. So we are still in section 7.1, 7.2. We are looking at uh, the problems in part B, and this is example three in that set. So we have a cantilever beam that's shown is subjected to a concentrated load of 175 kilonewtons. The cross-sectional dimensions are given. Um, calculate the shear stress at point K. We're also going to find it at point H. Um, we're going to find both of those. And I think I called them maybe backwards. Um, but anyways, uh, so point H and point K, which means we're going to have several different values of Q. Also, the maximum horizontal shear stress in the tube. So I know that I always start with equilibrium. And by observation, I know that my reaction at the wall is going to be P going up, and my shear diagram is going to be just a constant. So I know that my shear max is equal to P, which is given as 175 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay. Then I need to make sure that I find my uh, section properties. And again, we are given the value of uh, moment of inertia, copper T's, but it's not always going to be given. So you just need to remember to do that. So the big thing that we're going to be working on this time are our values of Q. Because for all of these, we're going to be using that shear stress equation of VQ over IT. So we have our shear, that's given as 175 times 10 to the third newtons. Um, our thickness is going to come from wherever we're looking at. Our moment of inertia is given, so we have these values of Q. So um, what I want to do really quickly is just kind of look at this and, and come over here and realize that if the whole thing is 250 millimeters, then the height of half of this is going to be half, which is 125 millimeters. Okay? And if I'm going to go 90 millimeters up, I have to know that going to the top then is going to be 125, 90 minus. I have 35 millimeters. Okay. I'm also coming down to the very bottom fiber at 125 millimeters. If I'm coming down 50 to get to K, I know that this height is 125 minus 50 which is 75 millimeters, okay? And we're working with a thickness of eight millimeters all the way around. So what does my shear stress distribution look like? Here's my centroid. I know that my distribution, if I'm looking at my shear stress, is going to be zero top and bottom. I also know that because I have this change of thickness, eight millimeters down, that I'm actually going to have a change um, at that point in my shear stress. So I'm going to come down. I'm increasing parabolically. I have a big change. Q is the same. V is the same. I is the same. But I go from a thickness of 150 millimeters, okay, thickness of 150 millimeters, to a thickness of 2 times 0 0.08 right there. And then we're going to come around. We're going to have our maximum. I made the maximum a little bit too early, so let's redraw that. We're going to come around. We're going to have our maximum, maximum, we're going to come back. And because of symmetry, I know that it's going to look something like this. Okay. So if I need to find the maximum shear stress, that is where we look at the entire half, upper, below, or above. It doesn't matter. And because of symmetry, it really doesn't matter. And when I'm looking at Q, the easiest thing for me to do here is instead of I could break this up into a rectangle and then two other rectangles. But I can also recognize I can find Q of the solid and then subtract out Q of the hollow. Okay, so if we are looking all the way to the top, then I have 125 millimeters. If I want to look at Q to the inside top, it's going to be 125 millimeters minus 8, 125 enter 8 minus, so that's going to be 117 millimeters to the inside of the top. So Q max occurs at the centroid, 
and I'm going to do Q of the whole minus Q of the, <laughs> Q of the, I guess, whole. <laughs> so Q of the whole is the outer, Q of what I'm cutting out, the, the material I'm punching out is gonna be that inner. So let's look at Q of assuming the whole thing was solid, whole thing was solid. So I have base times height, okay? My base, my base is 0.15 meters. My height is 0.125 meters. My Mohan arm is 0.125 divided by two, okay? And then I'm going to have Q of the part I'm punching out. So when I look at this base inside here, I can see that it's 150 millimeters minus eight minus eight. 150 enter minus eight minus eight. So inside I have 134 millimeters of cross section. So I have 0 0.134 meters times, okay, inside height 0.117 meters. And the centroid of my rectangle going up is 0.117 divided by two. So let's get that whole amount, assuming it was a solid cross section. 0 0.00117875 millimeters to the fourth, to, uh, no, to the third, okay, because it's Q to the third. And then let's look at Q of the part we're punching out, 0.134 enter, 0.117 times, 0.117 enter, 2 divided by times, and because we're punching it out, it is a negative 0 0.00917163 millimeters, actually it's not millimeters, we've already converted it into meters. So let's check those units, so I have meters to the third, meters to the third, and if I subtract them then, I'm going to get my maximum Q is the difference of those two, 0 0.00025472 meters cubed. So now we have our Q for our maximum. If I wanna find out at H what's, what is going on, I'm gonna draw a very similar picture, okay? And I can find Q of the whole solid minus Q of what I'm cutting out, but this time I can also cut off those legs. So if I'm looking at H, I am 90 millimeters up, okay, to here. So if the whole height, if the whole height is 125 millimeters, then I know that this distance has to be 125 minus 90 which is 35, and I can go about this several ways. I could turn these into rectangles and have a rectangle plus a rectangle plus a rectangle, so I would find their A's and then their distances, or I know that I could do the whole thing minus the inner, and now I'm gonna be cutting off these legs, and that's gonna be the easiest way to do this. So Q of H is going to be Q max, Okay, Q max, and that's where we're just assuming all of this area, but I only want above that point. So I'm gonna subtract off minus two times, okay, my base, 0 0.008 meters, my height, 0 0.09, I've gotta get that into meters, 0 0.09, and then the centroid of my height is 0 0.09 divided by two. And so that's the easiest way to find Q max is just to take that whole of 0 0.00025471 enter, two enter 0 0.008 times 0 0.09 times 0 0.045 times, and then we're gonna subtract that out, 0 0.00018912 meters cubed. Okay, now I can do the same thing for K, except this time we're looking down, but because of symmetry, I can do the exact same step. So here I have, I can find my Q at K, it's gonna be Q max minus, okay, 
we are at 50 millimeters down. Here is K. So this is 50 millimeters. So I'm going to find this whole piece here as a solid. That's my Q max minus the Q of these two legs that I don't need because I need everything beyond that fiber. So 2 times 0 0.05 times 0 0.008 times 0 0.05 divided by 2. And I get Q of K equals, so let's look at our max, 0 0.00025471. 2 enter 0 0.05 times 0 0.008 times 0 0.025 times. And now let's subtract 0 0.00023471 meters cubed. And I would accept some, expect something bigger than H because I'm closer to my centroid, but smaller than what I have at my centroid. Okay? And if we're going to sketch this out, then the other thing that we need is Q of where we have that transition up here at the top from a width of 150 millimeters to a width of 8 millimeters and 8 millimeters. So we're going to draw yet another section of Q. Okay, another section of Q. And this time we're going to do it kind of the traditional way. So I'm just going to make this be a cross-sectional area. And I need the Q of that area so I can find the Q of my transition. I know that I am still 125 millimeters to the top. I know that this thickness right here is 0 0.08, so it's 8 millimeters. So the distance up to that triangular section is 125 enter, 8 minus 117 millimeters. Okay, so if I want this area, I know that it's 150 millimeters across, it's 8 millimeters thick, the centroid is going to be marching up 117 plus an 8 over 2. So Q at my transition is going to be base 0.15 meters times height 0 0.008 meters times 117.117, got to get it in meters plus 0 0.008 divided by 2 to get up to that centroid. So Q of transition equals 0.15 enter, 0 0.008 times 0.117 enter, 0 0.008 enter, 2 divided by, plus 0.15 times 0 0.008 times, and I get a Q of 0 0.0001452 meters cubed. So now it's pretty easy to come back and figure out these, these stresses. Shear equals VQ over IT. So if I want my maximum shear stress, I have 175 times 10 to the third newtons. I have a Q value of 0.00025471 meters cubed divided by, oh, this is given in millimeters, so we'll divide that out, 52235072 divided by 1,000 to the fourth to get it from millimeters to the fourth to meters to the fourth. And Q over IT, my thickness here at this point is 2 times 0 0.008 meters. And when I multiply this out, 175 e to the third, 0 0.00025471225 times 52235072, enter 1000 to the fourth, divided by, divided by 2 divided by 0 0.008 divided by. And then this is going to be in Pascals because everything's in Newton and meters. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my maximum shear stress is 53.33 mega Pascal, which that would be right here. So 53. And our units then are mega Pascal. Okay. If I want the shear stress at H, I still have 175 times 10 to the third. Okay, this time I have the Q of H, 
which is given right here. Then I have it divided by I, which is given. And then our thickness, if I'm looking at H, H is right here within the two, these two legs. So two times 0 0.008. And so let's multiply that out. It should be smaller than 53.33. 175 E to the third. Okay, Q of H, 0 0.00018991212 times. Moment of inertia, 52235072. Enter, 1,000. Enter to the fourth, divided by, divided by, 2 divided by 0 0.008, divided by 123456, 39.77 megapascal. And this is my shear stress at H. Okay, now let's find our shear stress at K. It's still going to be that same amount of shear. Um, our Q at K, we have over there. Our I is given. If I'm looking at K, my thickness is still 2 times 0 0.008. So we have 175 e to the third times Q, 0 0.00023471 times, divided by I. 52235072 enter, a thousand enter to the fourth, divided by, divided by, two divided by 0 0.008 divided by, and I get a shear stress of 49.1, 49.15 megapascal. Okay, so now I need to find my Q at the transition because so somewhere h is somewhere in here and that value is 39.77 k is somewhere closer by symmetry i know it's here it's going to be 49.15 but i need to worry about this transition so when i'm finding my stress at the transition i have to remember i have two thicknesses there so i still have my v i have my q from the transition which is the same regardless of the thickness that i'm looking at sorry i'm running out of lead Okay, my moment of inertia stays the same, but I'm going to have two different thicknesses. I'm going to have a thickness of 2 times 0 0.008, and I'm going to have a thickness of 0 0.150, okay? Because I'm going along this transition, I'm going from a thickness of 2 times 8 millimeters, and all of a sudden at this magical spot, I have a thickness of 2 times 8 millimeters, but I also have a thickness of 150 millimeters. So I'm going to have to do this two ways. So my shear stress at the transition, where my thickness is 0.15, will have one shear stress. My shear stress at the transition, where I have a thickness of 2 times 0 0.008, will have another value. So let's figure out what those values are. So I have 175 e to the third times Q of the transition, 0 0.0001452 times divided by I, 52235072, enter, 1,000, enter to the fourth, divided by, divided by. And now let's look at our thickness of 2, 0 0.008, divided by, and I get... One, two, three, four, five, six, thirty point four megapascals. Now I'm going to multiply by two and multiply by zero, zero point eight to go back, and now I'm going to divide through by point one five. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, and I get three point two four. So when I come back up. This little guy is 3.24, and this guy right here is 30.4, and then we come all the way up. Then we're going to go through 39.77 and um, 49.15 until we get our maximum at 53. And so that's where if you've got, you know, just not a solid shape, you have to find cues everywhere.